Hi everyone, my name is Angelica and I'm here with Ken today. Hello Ken. Hi Angelica, hello everyone. Uh, we are here today because we want to share a little bit of um, our experience, well mostly Ken experience, uh, as a, a hopefully uh, a way to, um, to, to show people what's really like to go through uh, leukemia and treatment uh, and everything that uh, Ken has gone through. Um, so Ken, if you could um, start by telling us when, uh, how old were you when you were diagnosed with? Yeah, so I, I was literally just a few days from my 64th birthday. Uh, it was about three days before my birthday. Uh, and that was last year. So I'm 65 now. And uh, yeah, so it was a, a, a really good birthday present as you can imagine it was it was not the best no not the best so uh, do you remember you know the exact moment when you were told that was actually when they confirmed that it was actually leukemia yeah of course yeah so i i'd been ill for a few days i i felt like i had flu um and uh, i had aches and pains and i'd gone to the doctor my local gp general practitioner and uh, they did some tests, said they didn't know what it was. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm suffering from a bit of a cold. But um, they didn't know what it was, sent me over to the hospital. Uh, and I was there for a few hours. They did some blood tests, came back. And um, I was told, obviously, that I had a, a serious uh, blood condition, a blood illness. And by this time, uh, they'd been giving me some questions about my family history. And during that, somebody, one of the doctors had mentioned leukemia. <clears throat> and I hadn't thought anything of it at the time, but when they said you've got a serious blood condition, I immediately said, have I got leukemia? And they said, yes. And that's okay. my, my first point of, of you know, reference to reference. having that condition. Yeah. yeah. And what type of say, leukemia was it? it it's uh, acute myeloid leukemia, otherwise known as AML. Okay. Um, and what, I mean, is there any reason why they gave you, or do you think that you've got cancer? Well, there's lots of, uh, from what I can gather, there's lots of knowledge, of course, today about what actually happens. Uh, and what's happening to the structure of cells, etc. Yeah. Uh, so the doctors and the consultants are very knowledgeable about that. But I don't actually think anyone knows what triggers that malignancy. Um, of course, they talk about, you know, there's a higher risk if you smoke. There's a higher risk if you are exposed to certain chemicals, etc. Yeah. Uh, and it, of course, including radiation, that's a, a well-known thing for leukemia. Exactly. But the levels of radiation that we're talking about are not something that people experience in day-to-day -day life. I, I no idea, and I have no family history of, of, of leukemia. So, so with was, the AML, could have been a, a genetic, uh, could, ha could you have had from your mum and dad, or is it not related at all? Well, they obviously asked me the question, so yeah. perhaps they thought that, but I have no knowledge of any family history of, of leukemia, so, um, uh, so I don't think there's any genetics. But, <clears throat> of course, you can't say what's happened three or four generations earlier if, no. if you know, my great-great-great-grandfather yeah. had suddenly died. They that didn't I'm have unaware that knowledge of. anyway. No one would have known it was leukemia back then. Anyway. No. So I, I don't know. And I don't think the medical profession really know what triggers it. So what happened from when they told you that you had leukemia to, you know, what, what kind of what, um, you know, they suggested as treatment and what will happen next? Well, I, so I, I, as I said, I've gone from my doctors, my GP to the hospital, uh, where in the UK you go into... To enter the hospital, you have to go through accident and emergency and do triage, etc. cetera. Mm. Uh, and within two or three hours, I was on a hospital ward. Um, the next day, I was transferred to a hematology ward. Yeah. And they started basically doing some checks on me, uh, making sure that my heart, my lungs, et cetera, et cetera, were fit enough to start a course of chemotherapy. And I was on chemo within three days. So I, in a way, I was lucky because I think a lot of patients that have AML in particular or leukemia, 
uh, it takes a while for the medical team to identify what it is. You mm -hmm. know, you go to your doctors, you're not feeling very well, let's yeah. go away, try some antibiotics, come back if it doesn't get any better. Yeah. Two weeks later, uh, particularly in the UK at the moment, you can take two weeks just to get a hospital, a doctor's appointment. So I was lucky that from my early condition showing signs and getting through into a hospital and onto a hematology ward, which was, you know, within two or three days, I was, I was actually starting my chemotherapy course. So would anybody have gone through the same um, kind of process as you or, or would, did you go, do you think your process was sped, you know, speed up because of your... No, you know, I, I think everyone, I, I think, everyone. yeah. You, I think once, it's certainly again, I can only talk about the UK, of course, but I'm sure it's the same in Australia and, and, and yeah. you know, the US and Canada, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think once the, you, your condition is being diagnosed, the standard treatment kicks in and, and yeah. they put you onto an oncology or hematology ward and the process starts. So the delay is really often, I think, just making the identification of what the it problem is. is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, did, what did they explain <coughs> that you um, had to look forward ahead? What, what was the treatment going to be like? So they told me that, first of all, you'd start with some chemotherapy, uh, uh, which I did, as I said, within three days. Um, and there was, was initial... one, though, was it 10 days? That you yeah, had... so it's, uh, in my case, it was, uh, I can't remember the actual drug, but it was called DAR, uh, DA. Uh, so it's a combination of chemo yeah. drugs. And uh, basically that started from day, from memory, it was about day one to seven every mm -hmm. day. Some different course of, of drugs are being administered through a, a pick line into your, your arm. Into your arm. Um, and then due to the nature of AML, what's happening is there killing all of your immune system uh, yeah. and so i ended up for another four weeks after the chemotherapy had finished uh in an isolation room while yeah. my immune system built back up again and my neutrophils increased and uh, so i was in hospital for that first round of treatment for about five weeks and they were expecting that they had said to you yeah, that yeah, that was but yeah that, that was, was yeah. That, they, they, that was advised to me. I knew that was going to happen. Seven then, days of chemo and then four weeks yeah. of recovering. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that happened uh, five weeks. Um, uh, and then at the end of that five week period, my neutrophils, the white blood cells started to increase uh, to a point where I was uh, able to leave the hospital and come home for about a week. I think from memory, it was about five days. Yeah. Just for a bit of a break. Um, and they also then reviewed what had happened through my blood as to the, the, the condition. And I was in a partial remission. So uh, I hadn't, they hadn't got rid of the leukemia completely. Mm -hmm. um, and so they decided that I needed another course of chemotherapy. They said perhaps another two um and they also thought that i would be a candidate at this point for a stem cell transplant so they started to talk about the possibility of stem cell so that's where we were really i, I um i had five days at home then went back into hospital this time i had a different course of chemotherapy uh, a thing called flag ida again okay. I, can't, I can't remember what flag so is that, was it a completely different drug on the yeah, it's a different, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different course of chemo. It's stronger, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and that again, the same process. That time, I think it was five days of chemo, mm -hmm. followed by um, about five weeks in a, an isolation room, waiting for the um, the the um, neutrophils. Neutrophil, yeah, to to increase. What was it like being? Um you know, in hospital for five, I mean, what, what were your symptoms and you know, like side effects or? 
Well, um, I think probably like everybody else who's gone through chemo, you know, the usual thing. So you feel nauseous, you feel like you're going to be sick, tired. Um, that was, that, they were the worst things, the, the nauseous, the tiredness. Uh, I, I did a lot of sleeping. Um, yeah. People ask me, how did you stay in one room um, for five weeks? Five you know, and, and the answer is, well, I slept. I mean, I it was just like. You know, I, yeah. I, even though the chemotherapy had stopped after five or six days, you know, you the just, result was I just shattered and you just, you know, just getting up for breakfast. And you try to get in a chair next to your bed and you have a cup yeah. of coffee and it's just like, I'm going back to bed now. And yeah. So a lot of that. And, and I well, did you manage to eat anything or were you too sick? Yeah, I, I tried and I was lucky because uh, I have a wife who, who was able to bring food in that I yeah. have to say about the hospital food. Uh, they do their best, but, you know, you wouldn't pay money for it. No. Um, uh, I'm not a very good cook and I think I would have done better to be. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, it. Food wise, but I, I wasn't that hungry anyway, but you try, you know, everyone I think tells you try and eat a healthy diet. So you try. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not easy. Uh, no. Because your, your taste buds change a bit as well, don't they? And, and, and were so, you losing uh, weight or? Yeah, I, I started to lose weight. Again, that was through to the chemo, I think. So uh, I lost about uh, 10, 12, no, actually maybe 20 pounds. Wow. I don't know. You'd have to do the calculation. Yeah, the I, I, yeah, I don't know the calculation because I'll, I'll ten going kilos, keep... let's say. I, I'm wow. not sure. Yeah. And of course, yeah, I went like that. But yeah, and was that quite? Uh, does it happen quite quickly or? No. Well, the first, the first round of chemo. I think uh, again, I can't remember. It's about two weeks after the chemo stopped. I started to see my hair fall out, and so yeah. I, I shaved it, um, and. Uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. I, I think obviously for a woman it's it's more traumatic. Be, yeah. But yeah, for a bloke, you know, even when I came out from my first round of chemo and I remember I walking down the street and, and no hair. No one took any notice of a bloke. <laughs> a bloke in his sixties with no hair is like, okay. <laughs> pretty normal. It was really right, a bonus it? if you had any yeah, hair like yeah, right? Yeah. So, oh, so, oh. Uh, on your second, uh, so you had this uh, second chemo and then the same thing, five days in, as of five weeks, four weeks in isolation. And then... Yeah, that was traumatic though. That, the second that time. Was, well, that was the worst thing uh, because at the end of that period, um, they obviously take blood tests every day. And I had a visit from the doctor to tell me that they were, and I can't remember the exact words, but something to the effect that unfortunately they were very, very disappointed in, in the results of what right. happened. And I was still, uh, I had not reduced my, key, my, my leukemia levels. They, they call them blast cells. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and so there was a question of whether or not I could proceed to stem cell because they were still too high. Uh, and whether or not the treatment had worked at all. So, um, so that was a, a bit of a, a message which, you know, had then tell your family and, and uh, yeah. you know. And I, and we were now in about the October, November period. And I, I must admit, I didn't think I would make Easter. I thought I'd survive till Christmas, but... Um, but not, yeah. Yeah. But did, so they that actually, was, that was did they actually tell you, like, you, you know? No, no, they, no, one, no one said those words, you know. Exactly. Uh, I think, you, you've no, got, yeah. I think yeah. one of the doctors suggested I check out my uh, my will and my financial things, though that was that a was nice a way to say. <laughs> there was a nice way to. Uh... Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, anyway, that lasted for five days, five days of pretty, pretty traumatic uh, and emotional things. And then I had a phone call. They had sent me home at this point. Um, and then I had a phone call to say that the bone marrow um, results are now back in. So that initial uh, diagnosis was done based on blood. On blood, Now they okay. were doing it. 
based but, on yeah. bone marrow. And that was a different result. And, and what they had seen it look at, which is actually much more accurate measurement, uh, and which they took as being the main mm -hmm. criteria to, to, to monitor. Uh, and, and they actually said, actually, your, your bone marrow shows that you are an hour in remission. And so you've dropped below 5% of, of leukemia cells. So, so it would have been better for them to plan. wait, right? No, so we're back on plan. Uh, yeah. And, um, uh, what did I do? The, the following week, while I was out of hospital, I was then sent up to London. I live in Brighton, um, yeah. uh, and the hospital, it's a big hospital, but they don't specialise in transplants. So I was sent up to King's College Hospital in London uh, and, and talked to what the team uh, and the consultant was going to carry out a stem cell uh, transplant. So, so you knew it would uh, be based there for all the time that the transplant was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna. Can you hold the the video? I need to put my battery in. So yeah, I'll hold. Let the me just do that. Hold on. Cool. Okay. So there was a second, and um, and then did you have to have a third? Yeah. Um, so so uh, after my visit up to Sydney, meet, meet the, the medical team that were going to do the transplant, <coughs> I came back to Brighton and uh, went for a third series of flag ida, which again was um, five or six weeks. So why um, was it necessary for them to do a third one if you were already in remission and if they already knew that you were going to do? Well, they wanted that. I, I, you know that I. I Again, you, we, I guess we need to talk to the doctor about that. But my understanding was that while I was in remission at that point, there was still some percentage of cells which they wanted to lower even further. Okay. So it was, if you like, a double whammy of, of okay. getting the leukemia down. <clears throat> and uh, that brought me up to Christmas. And I was actually waiting for my neutrophils to come back. And it was Christmas Eve. Yeah. when um, they came back to a point where they said, you can go home, but don't get close to anybody at Christmas. Oh, you know, okay. Christmas. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. That was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that happened. And then uh, I was out of hospital for three weeks up until the middle of January. Uh, and then what happens is that you go back into the hospital where the transplant is going to take place. And you go through yet another round, a different Procedure, but this is a, a, a fourth round of chemo, um, and then with a different drug. Yeah, yeah, and, and that is what well, I think they refer to it as conditioning chemotherapy. So it's to getting you ready your body. to prepare to accept the donor cells. I did not. I do not have any brothers or sisters, so um, uh, the cells that they wanted were coming from a, a donor that I do not know. But I was lucky that they found a perfect match, uh, a 12 out of 12 is the term they use. Wow. Um, a young lady in the UK. That's all I know about her. She was 22. Wow. Um, and uh, on the 25th of January of this year, so coming up for nearly a year now, uh, I had the transplant. And, uh, and that was... So what happened yeah. on the transplant day? Because I think that is probably it's, a big... It's, it's ridiculously, stupidly simple. Uh, it is not even. So they, they by this point, they fitted uh, what uh, in the UK, UK is called a Hickman line. So this is, instead of going through your arm, this now goes a tube into your vein through the chest. <laughs> so okay. they administer the, the, uh, the cells, uh, which is in a bag, you know, looking like blood plasma, basically. <laughs> they administered that over a period of about 20, 25 minutes. Um, and I'm laying there and it's gone into me and it's just like, okay, thanks. That was it. Congratulations. You got new cells. Um, that was the, the whole procedure. I, had, I, I guess uh, it was a, a, a really a non-event. It, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, there's no sensation. Yeah. I did have three nurses in the room uh, at Watching different watching at the time yeah. uh um the, the nurse who was administered administrating or doing the, the procedure 
uh, a senior nurse and a junior nurse who was obviously just that gives you an indication that things can potentially yeah that, that, so I, I think the fact there were three, yeah there was a little yeah. bit my wife was with me as well jane was with me so um so yeah it was a bit of an event um but uh but yeah. did they prepare you to you know what's going to happen next or what you know yeah. did they well i was given a book it? to read i was given okay. a book to read uh i did read it not all of it um uh and uh of course the other side which has to be said and it's not very pleasant but it it, it does need to be said i suppose is that prior to all that treatment uh and you're going through a, a load of checks on your heart your kidneys your your liver okay. lungs uh, to make sure that you are physically able to to take the the, 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 the new stem cell don't yeah. they, they transplant <laughs> And during that process, they give you some warnings about what might possibly happen. Uh, and, you know, there are warnings given to you about mortality, because there is a chance that you don't get through. Uh, they give you warnings about life-changing events that might happen. Um, so, you know, it's a sobering period just to sort of reflect yeah. on all of that. And, uh, what do you think it kept you going, like, through, you know, like the treatment and to to get you to that point, like mentally, especially going through, you know, particularly that when the doctor told you things are not yeah. looking that good. I, I think um, that's a tough one. Um, in my experience is, is you try to get a balance. And I, I'm, I'm still doing this, even though it's near coming up for a year later. Yeah. And the balance is being positive, having a, a positive frame of mind you will get through this yeah you know it, it, you're gonna make it and and you're gonna it, it's a tough journey but you'll get there and you just got to persevere etc so you've got one side thinking that and then you're on the other side you're trying to prepare yourself mentally that if it doesn't happen as you'd like that you've got to get ready for the downside which is obviously either something life-changing you know and i you know there's there's a whole i won't go through that but no. there's a whole list of very nasty things that you know yeah, there's a have. percentage that down to you're not going to make you know you're you're, you're not going to make it and, and you're uh, and there'll be mortality involved so and they give you some percentages as well for that which is a bit sober wow. as well sobering as well um but uh in my mind uh, I did actually uh, spend a little bit of money and had a private consultation with a, a consultant in London. And was I it remember to get a second the, opinion or? Yeah, I, want, I, you know, I, I wanted second opinion. I was yeah. happy with the team, but I, I just felt, you know, this is a big event going on here and, and I want second opinions. And, um, and I remember him saying, one of the consultants saying that the, the statistics that they're using were based on a survey which had been done in the UK nationwide in 2007 and um, I'm in 2018 so things have moved yeah. on and it includes AML is a condition that can obviously affect children, children. all the way up to 90 year yeah. olds and so it's the whole gambit and I in my head thought well I'm not it's 90 not really I'm reflection. not reflection yeah so so that was another positive so i put my sort of hook on and, and said you know yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna make it but i think you do have to balance that between this sort of huge disappointment that may come down the road but it, yeah. you, you know it's not gonna it's not gonna work and i'd been through that myself earlier in the treatment so exactly that was always always sitting there so anyway what happens and what, is yeah and and then afterwards what like how when did you start feeling anything after the about, yeah about five a week later seven days later wow seven days of feeling fine yeah i thought i i was i was leaving the um with a mask on so i could go out of the hospital i went for a walk wow. around the park and uh yeah and then uh, it's, yeah and then i i, I just have to say the shit hit the fan. That's that's the only way. That, that's the only way you can describe it. Yeah, so what yeah. you, what did you start to feel? Well, um, if you, if you're going through this process, uh, and not just for uh, stem cells, but for any transplant, there's a thing called GVHD, graft versus host disease, 
okay. which the doctors had warned me about. Um, and, and the truth is, I'm not sure I know whether it was the conditioning chemotherapy that did it or whether I started to experience GVHD, graft versus host disease. But the first thing that happened was my mouth erupted in ulcers, really painful and very sore. Uh, which also went down my throat. So eating, so eat. swallowing, no, it was it was very painful. Um, I lost even more weight. Um, I started to have rashes on my body. Um, tiredness, I mean, you know, it's just like, don't know, I can't, I'm not going to wake up and have a cup of coffee for breakfast. I'm yeah. just staying in bed. Um, <laughs> I will skip that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, and uh, yeah, it, it was, oh, uh, stomach problems. Um, but ev every end of that sphere from constipation to day, I mean, it just stomach problems. So how were you, um, what, did you put a feeding tube or? Well, I, they, tr they did offer it to me uh, and I resisted. So I ended up having these milkshakes that I managed to take down. Uh, one of the worst things was, uh, and I think this is the chemo rather than, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, but losing your taste buds completely and everything mm. tasted like horrible. Yeah. So even now, a year later, there are certain foods that even when I'm eating it, I can taste it's back to normal. But I remember what it tasted like. What it tastes like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when it was in the treatment. And uh, it's just, yeah. So. Uh, and and the other thing that is the toughest thing about all of this is you 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 get told yeah things will get better uh, and this is you can expect it and a week goes by two weeks three four five a month has gone by and you don't feel much better you get to six so you still weeks had and, ulcers you still couldn't eat you still well yeah but then you realize so if you're looking at it on a day-to-day -day basis um nothing changes it's when you look back oh it's been a month now and wow. actually the ulcers are not quite as bad as they were so they are improving and then two it months goes by time. actually i yeah it's the time it's a yeah. long uh, and one of the things that was said to me early on which i guess i would say to anyone going through this treatment is it's a, it's not a sprint it's a marathon and you're talking 12 a year at least yeah. you know and uh, yeah it's it just drags on and on and on and keeping positive and active and doing yeah, that when you're jobs. physically feeling so unwell is pretty hard yeah. isn't it as well yeah, yeah. So, so when I did was you in start hospital. feeling better like when did you when well when, yeah, um, when did you get out well i got to a point when after about six weeks after transplant I, by this point, I'd had some serious, I had E. coli that developed uh, oh, no. Tepsine. Because uh, well. these are just, because this is your immune system has just been shattered. So you're, you know, these are in you already anyway. And they just come out. So they're giving antibiotics on top of everything. Yeah, yeah antiviral drugs and antibiotics. And, uh, but I, after about six, seven weeks, I was allowed home. Um, and I came home which was a, yeah, I had a, that was, that was a two hour drive, which was not nice because I had a urinary infection as well at that point. Oh. So uh, anyway, uh, I got home. I, I, where I live, there's a, a park down the road, uh, which takes me today about two minutes to walk to. It's taking me 15 minutes. And then I had to sit on the bench and take another 15 oh, minutes to get there. Yeah, it just wow. shattered no strength um, yeah i think that that's the other thing you're in hospital and you're in bed for a long time so your muscles waste away yeah, uh, yeah. and that again it takes a long time just to get out of bed do do 10, 10 meters 15 meters 20 you know yeah up. and and they it's, said you go home and then what just uh you know slow, slowly start getting back to normal, then normal life. They, you go home you start to build up as best you can strength uh eat as well as you can rest as much as you can um and go back to the hospital once a week and have blood tests bone marrow tests um 
And uh, so by, let me think, so January, so all through February and halfway through March, I was in hospital, got home in March. By, I got to June, I suppose. And now I started to feel I could go for a proper walk. And, and you know, I'm, I, I, I'm fortunate I, I live by the, the sea, so okay. I can walk down to the front and walk along there for a mile or two. And, uh, you know, started doing the three, four kilometer walks. So by July, I was ready. I joined a gym, mm-hmm. started building right. up some strength. And then, yeah. uh, and then end of August, beginning of September, I started playing tennis. Uh, awesome. So it started to come back, but it was eight eight months from nine months from transplant, oh. really. But I, wow. yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, have you changed anything in your life since you know you've had cancer, since cancer? <coughs> well, so were you work-wise, working before, and you know? Yeah, where... you know, you asked me a question, Angelica, about one of the things that might have happened to cause it. Um, I, I had a job which was very stressful. I, I run a company and uh, I was the head of a division for an American corporation. Uh, I traveled a lot. You know, I, I, I remember one occasion a couple of years ago, I, I, I flew from the UK to India. I was there for a week, flew back to the UK, went to Los Angeles, came back to the UK, went to New York. Came. I was in a constant state of jet lag. Yeah. So, Fired. you know very very tired and sleep is an important healer i think um, so Definitely. you know that's the only thing that so uh work wise i've stopped working now um and uh i try to keep fitter than i did before so i, I I'm, I'm going to the gym because i've got more time to do things like go for yeah. walks and, yeah. and so on diet wise try uh, again i'm not i'm not i haven't taken a religious i'm not doing this i'm not doing that. yeah so but i try to avoid certain things so i think we all know, you know sugar for example you know yeah, yeah. I, I i i no longer have sugar in my coffee uh, yeah it's small things like that but but that i'm not i'm not difference. yeah but i'm not religious about it i have to confess if i fancy yeah. a, a little bit of chocolate i'll have some chocolate yeah but i probably don't have as much as i did before um i did go through a process of thinking about um you know doing uh meditation etc um and i still do but it's more just taking 10 minutes and sitting and laying down and just thinking about relaxing rather than you know i'm not i'm not doing any of that sort of Levitating yet. Okay, no, yeah, I haven't done the levitation yet. No, <laughs> but, uh, I do start to try and stop and think about, you know, just relaxing. And yeah. Uh, do that a little bit more. So, so I think it's just generating things which are likely to help heal naturally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And have you been able to find any positives on your journey? I know that's a really hard one, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I I guess there is a positive somewhere along all of this. Um, I mean, there are more negatives than positives, to be sure. Um, I, I guess, you know, if you sit back now, coming up for a year later, you you're, you look at, you do view life differently. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's uh, your family and, and, and just time. Uh, you can appreciate things a little bit more than, perhaps I did before so yeah here I am sitting what is it the middle of December in a, a cold wet UK um, my, my, my garden is underwater because of the rain we've had I know that probably doesn't sound very uh, don't tell me that you're still happy Australia <laughs> at the moment but uh, yeah it's pretty grey and miserable but you know you could uh, you could enjoy you can enjoy that can you hold the line a second Je- I, I'm looking through to my wife, who's just about to start playing the piano. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we were going to be serenaded we, for a we, second. On the background, okay. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, so there are positives, but, you know, it's, it's a tough one to answer. 
And, um, you know, you mentioned a little bit like that you even now, like you, you do things. Um, it's almost, you know, I've read a lot about like the post-traumatic, like, you know, stress disorder that you get after having cancer, you know, like, and it's not, um, it doesn't need to be defined like that. And as a, as a serious condition and such, but uh, it is a major thing that you go through. And, you know, and I think, you know, what the way that you think about things is still, stays with you for quite a long time and the trauma of it of it all um i mean how if you look at your life like now like how you know how would you you know how would you describe your life like you know what it is like now like physically and mentally physically, and that was like, yeah, right, well, that you thing. know that, that so i i i'm, I'm um, physically i i've got a lot of building up to do so i i i've I had a cold two, three weeks ago, went onto my chest. Um, uh, I got a slight fever. I phoned up the hospital. They sent me in. I was in hospital for six days while they checked me over and made sure that it didn't develop, etc. And that's due to my immune system still needing a lot of effort to build up. Um, yeah. So, uh, but apart from that, I, physically, I feel like I'm pretty much back to where I was before the condition. Awesome. Uh, mentally, I don't know, actually. I think, you know, I'm in remission. I'm in full remission. Uh, the disease, they, they, they uh, what's it? Minimal residual disease, MRD, uh, is negative. So there's no sign under a microscope of, or, or you know, not just a microscope, but process they check for leukemic cells. So I'm in full remission, but, um, you know, every three months I'm going to have my bone marrow taken, uh, which is uncomfortable rather than anything else. It's a bit like yeah. going to the dentist and having a, a filling, you know, it's, it's yeah. not nice. No. Uh, and for how and long are you going to have that for yeah. two? You're going to have that for two, two years or so. And then yeah. it goes back to six months and, uh, and so mentally, you're trying to think, as I said before, stay positive. Yeah. But be realistic that this could come back. Um, and then time marches on. So, um, you know, medically, you, you, you read lots of things, don't you? And, and half, no, not half, 80%, maybe 90% you don't actually understand because you need to have a medical degree. Mm. and specialise in haematology to understand what mm. the hell they're talking about. But, um, you know, the, so the, the treatment that's coming online with CAR T cells, et cetera, et cetera, you think, well, if you get through a few years, it might even change all over change. again. Uh, and it's likely to change. Yeah. You know, um, you know one of the uh, interesting things, when I first went to the hospital and they were talking about a stem cell they they were talking about a perfect match of 10 out of 10 but when i actually had the transplant the match had changed to 12 out of 12 because they had added two additional areas of so so it, you know it, it's a Things very are changing dynamic, all the time all the time uh, and it's a very I, I guess for the the medical teams that are involved it's a very exciting time uh, for patients, I guess we should be excited about it as well. But uh, yeah, but yeah, but I'd rather be more excited about football results than. <laughs> uh, and now, I think my last question would be: if you could say something to anybody that was just diagnosed with uh, AML leukemia, what would you say? Um, well, bad luck. Uh, you know, I think. It is, there's a lot of luck involved as well. You know, I, I, not, not just leukemia, but I think cancer in general. I'm not, I, I, I've, heard, I've read people say this before, but I believe, I, you know, this, you know, it's a battle and go out and fight and win the battle. It's, nah, you, you know, there's a lot of luck involved. There's a lot of uh, your medical team, etc. cetera. Uh, but there's, so the bad luck, today, the bad there's luck a lot is, of, is getting it or the bad luck with, with the, your medical, like getting a good medical team on your side? Or getting, it, with... uh, uh, getting it, getting and, it, and just, yeah. and also whether, you know, the genetics that you're made up respond to the treatment, because people who don't make it are not necessarily, they didn't try or they haven't done yeah. something wrong. 
it's just they were unlucky and, and I, I, that for me you know I, I i i didn't like the idea of losing that because i didn't try hard uh, you know it's not like that is it yeah so so what would i say to someone with aml um i would say uh, it's it's a long be prepared for a very long 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 haul this is this is as i said earlier a marathon yeah um uh, when when you go through the treatment uh, and every day nothing seems to change when you look back a month or two months you realize actually things are improving but it's very very slow yeah um and the hope side is that it, there are incredible medical advances, which, you know, 30 years ago, I would not be having this conversation. No. Uh, and here we are. So, um, and that's improving. So that hope is yeah. always there, I think. Um, yeah, I think somebody, somebody told me uh, the other day, I was in my volunteer um, work and, uh, was a lady uh, who was receiving the chemotherapy and her friend and her friend said, I asked my friends, oncologists, you know, what if this chemotherapy doesn't work? And the oncologist said to her, don't worry about it. You know, we are, as we speak, we're working on new drugs. And if this one doesn't work, we'll come up with a different one. So right now, yeah. just, you know, yeah. let, it's pointless worrying about that because as we yeah, speak, yeah. we are working on, millions of other solutions so yeah which is, exactly like you said yeah. you can look at that as you know positive um, yeah 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 exactly right yeah yeah awesome well thank you so much for your time i hope this is helpful for anyone that um has unfortunately been diagnosed with uh, leukemia uh if you have any questions you can uh, put on the comments below and if you'd like to uh have a chat uh, here on YouTube about your cancer journey. Um, uh, please contact up with my email down uh, below as well. And I would love uh, to meet you too. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.